Welcome to the AP Physics video lecture. This is going to be covering unit 4 energy. Particularly the subject is going to be energy in circular motion. The first scenario that we're going to talk about is the energy in a pendulum. These are typical questions that you will see in regards to energy in the pendulum. First of all, you want to label the location where the pendulum is at rest. There are two locations where the pendulum is going to be at rest. At rest there and at rest there. The reason why is <clears throat> because the object does not go to the right further or the object can't go left any further. So you want to really think about this as when V is equal to zero at this moment because this is when the velocity changes direction. Next, level the location where the pendulum has the fastest speed. In the middle, notice this is going to be where V max is. Right? Label the speed in between the at rest and the fastest speed. So it's going to start off slow, then it's going to pick up the quickest. So velocity is going to V is going to increase as it goes towards the center. So V increase as it goes towards the center. It picks up speed because right in the middle is when it's V max. What location does the pendulum has the most potential energy? Most potential energy is where the velocity equals to zero. So we would say that the U G is equal to max at this moment. U G is equal to max at this moment. Right? Next, what location does the pendulum have the most kinetic energy? Well, this is where V max is, so this is going to have the most kinetic energy. The diagram that I show you here is the relationship between potential and kinetic. As it starts swinging towards the center, all the potential energy is going to get to convert it into kinetic. It is not linear. This relationship is not linear. The relationship is not linear. Let me repeat, it's not linear. Because you're converting an mgh is equal to one half mv squared. So you are comparing something that is linear to something that is quadratic in nature. Degree one, this is a degree two. So they're not a one-to-one -one relationship. This should give you an idea of the energy in a pendulum. The next scenario is you're going to see a circular motion in an Atwood machine. Here you could read the scenario to yourself. The Atwood machine shows consistent of the block M1 and M2 that are connected by a light string that passes over a pulley of negligible friction and negligible mass. The block of mass 1 M1 is a distance H1 above the ground, and the block of M2 is a distance H2 above the ground. M2 is larger than M1. What is the system here? You would have to say the system would be M1, M2, and Earth. The reason why you have to include Earth is that there is going to be some potential energy equals to MGH. You need Earth to get that G value. Is the system or closed? Well, it says negligible friction and negligible mass. So nothing is converted into drag or thermal, so you would say the system is closed. Therefore, you can use the conservation of energy. The energy lost by M2 is gained by M1. So what type of energy did M1 gain? Well, M1 gains potential energy because it's going to move up. Here it's going to move up and it's going to gain an H. What type of energy did M2 lose? Well, it's going to lose potential energy because it's going to come down here and it's going to lose an H. Next, because the system is closed, the change of energy of the system is equal to the work done. What is the work being done in this system? Hmm, interesting. That's the definition. System is closed. The change of energy of the system is equal to the work done. You would say that the work done is by gravity on the system. Gravity is doing work on the system. However, work is equal to zero in this case. Work is being done by gravity, but it is zero. Work 
is actually just moving the energy between M1 and M2. The potential energy gained by M1 was lost by M2. If the system of the block is the block block earth, what type of energy would the system gain when it is released? There is one type of energy that it does gain. The system will gain kinetic energy. The reason why it gains kinetic energy is because M2 is going to move. There is going to be an, a velocity that moves the M2 down as well as move the M1 up. There is going to be a velocity. Anytime anything moves, it has kinetic energy because there isn't a velocity associated to it, right? Because kinetic energy by definition is moving mass. Seven, graph the kinetic energy and potential energy as a function of the height. Well, it looks like this. The energy that is lost by UG is equal because look how gravity goes down as a function of H. Is in the, the energy lost by gravity in the system is gained by kinetic energy in the system because the system is still closed. So what potential energy is lost in the system is gained in the terms of kinetic energy. Eight, what happens to the gravitational potential energy in terms of the center of mass? Well, if you take a look here, uh, this is the previous example. We can say that what I mean by the center of mass is that the center of mass is basically defined by the mass and the distance between them. So what happens to the distance between them? Well, we would say that the, gravi the gravitational potential energy decreases because the center of the mass of M1 and M2 moves downwards. This makes sense because this is going to go downwards. The final one would look something like this, right? And the center of mass would look something like this, okay? So notice it moved down, the center mass moves down because the M2 moves down and M2 is heavier. Now you wanna take a look at if the pulley magically disappears and this starts falling, what is the change in the kinetic energy of the center of mass? Here are your different um, formulas, right? The change in kinetic energy again was what? It's just going to be M G H because the kinetic energy was going to be equal to potential. So it is M Y plus M X equals to G H because this is going to be now mass of the system. That is the reason why it's the last one. Next, we're going to talk about the energy on a Ferris wheel. And a zoom and a moon. An amusement park ride has identical carriages that revolve around the center of a ride, axes shown here in the figure. Both cars travel at a constant tangential speed at any point along the circular path. One, if the system is the individual cart and earth, which carriage will have the highest amount of potential energy? Well, it would be carriage one because it has the highest height at this moment. Carriage one has this high of a height, so this is going to be H1. This is H4, smaller, H3, which is the lowest, and H2. If you want to rank this, you would say um, cart 1 has the highest potential energy. Then it's cart 2 that has the highest potential energy. Cart 4, then cart five, 3. This is the greatest to the lowest in regards to kinetic energy. If the system is the individual cart and earth, what happens to the system's potential energy as the wheel rotates? We would say that the object will have the potential energy on top. As it rotates down, the potential will be converted to kinetic. Oops. Let's take a look why that is true. So let's take a look at cart one. At the top here, it is all potential energy. So it's all UG at this moment. As it starts rotating down, 
okay, the height will decrease. When height decrease, that means you potential energy will decrease. When potential energy decreases, what is gained? Okay, K will go up as a result. If K goes up, V goes up. All right, so that's what you can say. The object will have the largest poten potential energy on the top. As it rotates down, the potential energy will be converted to kinetic. Then as it moves up, the kinetic is going to be converted to the potential. If the system is the Ferris wheel and Earth, what happens to the system potential energy as the wheel rotates? Nothing. Look, the difference between question two and question three is this. It's the individual carriage and Earth. Why this is the entire Ferris wheel and Earth. That's the difference. If you treat it as the individual cart, right, the potential energy changes. But if you treat this as the entire system of the Ferris wheel, nothing happens. The energy stays within the Ferris wheel. Four, the radius of the Ferris wheel is defined by R. What is the formula of the potential energy of the carrot when it is on top? While it's on top here, UG is going to be equal to MGH, so you just need H. What is H here? Well, H is going to be the diameter, so it's twice the radius. So potential energy would be 2 MGR, right? Twice the radius. Next, the radius of the Ferris wheel is now doubled. What is the formula for the potential energy of the of the Ferris wheel when it is on top? Well, it is doubled, so now it becomes 4. The Ferris wheel is now doubled, so the R is doubled. So that's why it becomes 4 MGR. There is a centripetal force towards the center of the Ferris wheel. Does the centripetal force do work on the Ferris wheel? On the Ferris wheel direction of motion. Well, you want to think about if the system is closed or not. Is this system closed? Yes, you would say that the system is closed. Right? And the system that is closed, okay, the work is going to be equal to zero. Work is defined as force times distance. So distance change, so is there force. So force has to be equal to zero, All right? That's the explanation. Here's the words for it. Zero work because the wheel does not exert a force on the block directly along the carriage direction of motion. There you go. Next, a planet orbits um, the planet moves in an elliptical orbit around a star, as shown in this diagram. Fill in the following statement to describe what happens when the planet moves from point 1 to point 2. You want to use the word increase, decrease, and constant. So here, the object's kinetic energy, as it goes from here and all the way over here, will decrease. So K will decrease. And the gravitational potential, as a result, will decrease increase the reason why it will increase is because now it has a further distance away right if you think about u g h right it has a larger distance away so it has more potential energy at this moment but the total energy will be constant next as it comes back in though right the potential energy is going to go down as it keeps coming potential energy is going down as a result k is going to go down so kinetic energy is going to increase potential energy is going to decrease but the total energy of the system is still constant now you want to prove kepler's second law that planet as the planet approaches the star the object's tangential velocity will increase enough to swing around the star with the answer from part one and part two. What you can say is that at this moment, it has all kinetic energy. The fact that it has all kinetic energy, V is gonna be, it's gonna be V max. Here, this is gonna be V um, equals to like minimum, right? So that is Kepler's uh, second law. Part of it, Kepler's second law. The planet, the orbiting planet, as it comes closer to the star, is going to gain a lot of velocity, causing it to swing around and not crash into the planet.
right? And there you go. That is everything that you need to know about circular motion, energy in circular motion.